Hi, my name is Sarah Powers, and I'm doing question number two for Bartleby the Scrivener. The question I have is, how would you describe the narrator's attitude towards Bartleby? Does it change throughout the story, and if it does, how? And why do you think the narrator not only tolerates Bartleby, but also seems to look out for him by the end of the story? Um, in the beginning of the story, we hear the narrator talk about his other employees. He spends pages 879 to 882 talking about the three of them and what he likes about them and what he does not like about them. So when Bartleby comes in, he's a breath of fresh air. He is younger. He's nicely dressed. He has a good attitude. He's very polite. and He's exactly what the narrator wants. So he brings Bartleby in to work you know, directly beside him, and then he learns Bartleby's true colors. He asks Bartleby to do different tasks and Bartleby says no I prefer not to and when your boss asks you to do something you do not say no. So he gets very frustrated and as time goes on Bartleby keeps doing what he's doing and he starts to realize Bartleby obviously has some sort of mental illness possibly. So he goes from frustration to a little bit of pity knowing that you know Bartleby's not exactly right. So he decides that he cannot work with Bartleby right there in his office, so he asks him to leave. He does it in a compassionate way. He doesn't say, Bartleby, you're fired, get out. He offers him time, he says you have six days, and he gives he offers him money. On page 893, he says, the time has come, you must quit this place. I am sorry for you, here is money, but you must go. So he's not very, he's not mean about it. He's very compassionate to Bartleby, but he, he just, cannot work with him there anymore. Um, Barlby doesn't leave. He's, you know, he goes back to being a little bit frustrated, but he does not, he doesn't know what to do, so he does the only thing he, he figures he can. They pack up and they leave. He doesn't want to leave, you know, he doesn't want to send Barlby to jail because he's, a com he's being compassionate to him, so they leave. And then eventually he is contacted by the new tenants of the office. They want to know who is this man, what is he doing here, and what are you going to do about it? And the narrator, you know, he knows he, he has no obligation to Bartleby. He's a former employee, but that's it. But he goes anyway. You know, by this time Bartleby's in jail. He goes to the jail to check on him. He's being compassionate towards him. He feels pity for him. He wants to make sure he's okay. So he goes to the jail. He offers money to the workers to make sure he's well taken care of. He pays the, the cook to make sure he eats well. And he, you know, this is all he can really do for Bartleby. And then, you know, he he goes back to check on him again. He realizes Bartleby is not not okay, and Bartleby di dies. So once he dies, he feels sadness for him, obviously. So he goes from being enthusiastic to being very frustrated with Bartleby to pity to, to sort of a sadness because you know he knew Bartleby was not, you know, totally okay. So um, eventually. He does find out, you know, a little bit about Barbie's past because he didn't know anything before. Um, he finds out he, you know, he worked for the dead letter office, for the post office, and that was very stressful for him. And some people can handle stress better than others, and obviously Bartleby was not one of those people, so that did affect him a lot. And so at this point, he's, he's just, he's sad. At the end of the story, he's sad. He knows that Barbie had a rough time, and that makes him sad. So um, he definitely had a change in attitude towards Bartleby from the beginning to the end, from the enthusiasm to frustration and pity to just sadness. So um, hopefully that all this makes sense and everyone have a great day.